This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We're joined now by the acclaimed Palestinian photographer Motaz Aziza, who at the age of 25 has become world known for documenting Gaza. For the first 108 days of Israel's brutal assault on Gaza, Aziza risked his life to show the world what was happening. In doing so, he gained over 17 million Instagram followers and emerged as one of the most prominent photojournalists in the world. Since evacuating, Azeza has become a global advocate for Gaza. GQ Middle East magazine named Azeza its Man of the Year. Time put him on its list of 100 most influential people of 2024, and he's been nominated for the 2024 Nobel Peace Prize. Motaz Azeza is in the United States as part of a nationwide speaking tour titled Gaza Through My Lens, with Inner USA, the nonprofit that supports the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees. In a moment, he'll join us from Washington, D.C. But this is the video produced by Inner USA describing Motaz's work with the Agency. The clip begins with NRY USA's Mara Cronenfeld, but first, Leila Mochaiber. Gaza is one of the most beautiful places in the world, and that beauty was documented by a young photographer named Mataz Azeza for years. Eager to show the world his culture, his people, its rainbows, its sunsets, its sea. Even with this blockade, there was so much life in Gaza, and we thought we need somebody on the ground who can show us that life, and also, of course, can show us the important education and health and shelter assistance that UNRWA is providing uh, to those in Gaza. When I eventually was looking for a photographer on the ground to capture stories to help show the people of the United States the real stories of Palestine refugees, I convened some of Gaza's greatest around a table at El Gira Hotel, a place I'll forever cherish and miss. Among us were the late Dr. Rafat Alari and others. Leila collected uh, many applications. One was uh, a lovely woman named Amjad, and one was Mataz. That day that those two were selected changed us in, in so many ways as an organization, and frankly changed us each personally as well. Seeing Mataz suffer, along with all Palestinians in Gaza, and see him, and I'll never forget this, seeing him holding a bloodied child, a girl, uh, and taking her speeding to the hospital, and he had never learned to drive before that moment. Nobody in Gaza, in all of Palestine, chooses to be a hero. This includes Matas. Once I asked him over ice cream, what is the number one thing you wish the world knew about Hassan? And this nerdy photographer, whose favorite thing was capturing people's faces and pretty sunsets, he just had this sad look in his eye and he said, um, that we're human. He never wanted to be a hero. He just wanted to survive. A video by UNRWA USA about our next guest, the acclaimed Palestinian photographer Motaz Azeza. He's joining us now from Washington, D.C. Motaz, it's great to have you with us on Democracy Now! Um, I wanted to go to the picture of um, that introduces um, you uh, uh, on this tour that you took across the United States. You are sitting in the rubble. So, of course, this is not a photograph um, that you took, but a picture that a photographer took of you, the photographer Fouad, who was killed. Can you tell us about Fouad and then talk about your work for that 108 days in Gaza since October 7th? Thank you for having me, Amy. <coughs> uh, his name is Fouad Al-Khamash, and he was uh, a volunteer with the Palestinian Red Christian Society. He was doing his voluntary work, documenting the work of the BRCS on the ground, uh, saving lives and transferring the injured people to the hospital. Um, he was a dreamer, and, uh, and that day it was like a massacre when he took this picture for me in my uh, town. I was documenting and uh, this massacre, and he just shouted to me, Mataz, just 
I'll take a picture of you. Uh, less than two months, Fuad was killed, beside his like four of his colleagues in the BRCS. Uh, they didn't know that the Israeli tanks will be on uh, Salah Hadim main road in near al city. They didn't expect it, and they just found the Israeli tank in front of them, and it was he was inside the ambulance. Uh, unfortunately, we, we couldn't find a body for Fuad and other colleagues. Um, yeah, they opened fire on the ambulance. They killed everyone inside. So, Mataz, uh, I want to go now to another uh, photo of yours. Uh, this one is of a young girl stuck under rubble after her eight-story building was bombed by Israeli warplanes. Time magazine yeah. named it one of its top ten photos of 2023. The woman lost seven of her family members. She was evacuated to Tunisia. She's now facing the amputation of her leg. So tell us about this woman and how you've come to advocate for her. Actually, uh, she's a young girl. Uh, she's now 18 years old. And um, there was like an Israeli occupation bomb, that eight-story building in a Nusayrat refugee camp. So I was there with other colleagues documenting what's, what's happening. And uh, civil defense beside uh, civilians are trying to help to uh, save people from under the rubble. More than 180 people got killed that day. Uh, in this moment, I we were like we were like hearing her shouting, but nobody was uh, seeing her. So um, I used the low shutter speed with my camera to uh, in a small hole, so we can find her. And we we found her. Everyone's trying to get her out, uh, but unfortunately, she's now really facing <coughs> amputation for her leg. Um, Let's say um, I feel she's at least she's lucky that the world now see her picture. If I like saw his picture around the world, but there are others, thousands of children, thousands of young girls, thousands of women, thousands of elderly. There are, nobody is looking to them, and they really need the help. So um, I'm trying my best through the pictures, through the images of the people to help them themselves. Because yeah, this picture have been selected by the time as a top. Uh, one of the top 10 pictures around the world for 2023. Uh, but the person in the picture needs the help. Not just like I want to be recognized for the picture. We need to help the human themselves. I want to save the lives through the pictures. So, Mataz, uh, I want to ask you about your journey, how you became a photographer. You never wanted to become a war uh, photographer, that is what you've ended up becoming. But talk to us about how you became interested in photography and how you documented life in Gaza through photography. Uh, photography was my passion since 2014. Uh, I started to practice photography. I had my first, my first camera in 2015. My cousin sent it to me from he was living in the U.S., Miami, and I hope he's now safe. Uh, for the hurricanes that's happening there, help everyone be safe. Um, I start to take pictures for uh, the life, the simple life in Gaza. I start to take portraits. I start to be a dreamer who wants to travel the world, take pictures, and everyone knows his name. But I never expected the world will knows my name beside a genocide of my people. So um, I was always trying to make art from the pain and the beautiful pictures in a place that, like every month there is aggression, every time there is a bombing, every, every time there is people losing their lives by the Israeli airstrikes, by the Israeli snipers. Uh, I was like a volunteer. I went like, since like 2016 with the BRCS, I was having my camera. And 2018, I got a shot in my left femur while taking just pictures because I was near to the borders with the BRCS. Uh, trying to save lives because this is a thing I, I like I'm loving I'm trying to use myself to save my people and the same thing to take pictures so um, I kept the practice in photography but every time the war it grabbed me to it uh, I've been always trying to avoid taking pictures of, of war but this is my life this is our lives so uh, you can't run from the war that's happening in your home. And this is what I, I did. I used in this time, and every time, this is not my first time to document a war, 
uh, I documented massacres since like 2017 with my camera. And 2018, 2019, 2021, and 2022, 2023 in May, and 2023 on October. So uh, I've been always trying to take, to capture the beauty, but it's impossible to run from the war in, in my country. And Mataz, I mean, the images before October and after are so striking. Uh, I want to now show a photo of a toddler gravely injured in a strike. If you can tell us what happened to this two-year-old child named Jude, the Palestine Children's Relief Fund has evacuated him to Chicago. Um, uh, you know, on your trip, you met a child in Dallas for the 5K run uh, who'd been evacuated. I saw you in Brooklyn when you met a little boy who had been evacuated, who was gravely injured. Tell us about Jude. Uh, I remember that day when I took the picture for, for Jude. Um, I used my imagination. Like every young boy, he's very like to be like a Spider-Man. But this boy was really deeply injured, and his hands and his legs were like, he can't move. And like, I, I don't know, in, the, in this moment, I remember that this boy, he will be loved like in Superman and Spider-Man. But like, I saw like his image, like he, the move, the moves of like Spider-Man, but the same thing, he's injured, he can't move, he lost his mom, he lost his family, and his father, he didn't come to the hospital yet, he was like alone on the ground, there is no free space or a space for him on a, to find a bed in the hospital. So I took this picture, I shared the story, and thank God, uh, this picture, it, it was like a reason to save his life. Um, so he's now, he's now like getting a treatment. He's now in the U.S. with his father. And um, I'm happy for him. But at the same time, I'm really sorry for the thousands of children that I, I wish to take a picture for everyone to show the world that Israel is, is targeting our children. Israel is targeting our babies, targeting our mothers, targeting our families. I just want to show the whole world so maybe I can bring help to my people through my photography. And Motaz, can you talk about what it was like for you yourself uh, to have to flee Gaza? Do you still have family there? Uh, describe your journey out. Yeah, my whole family is there. Uh, my whole relatives is there. I'm originally from uh, Deir al-Balah uh, city. I'm originally from, uh, from Gaza Strip. So my whole family is still there. Uh, it wasn't an option for me to leave. It wasn't an option for me to stay. The, in the last day, I, the last days before I leave, I've been suffering to find food, to find uh, tents for, like, in order if something happened. The Israeli tanks, it's like at the end of my street, and um, I was like suffering, and I stopped doing my work, like just to find water, to find food, uh, to find diesel for the car. So everything was really complicated and the risk, the risk is so high. After I lost the two of my colleagues, uh, Hamza al-Dahdouh, the son of Wa'ad al-Dahdouh, and Mustafa Abu Traya, the drone uh, friend who was taking the drone shots for, my, for me. Uh, it was really hard for me to stay, and there was no protection for me as a journalist. And I don't want to lose uh, like a part of my body to just show the world, and to lose my life, to, to lose my, par my parents, and I already lost 25 of my family, of my relatives, uh, 18 of my friends. I lost my whole life, so uh, I don't think, I didn't think that day. Like I need to, uh, to lose more. Uh, for me, okay, maybe I will sacrifice my life if to do a change. But I'm seeing uh, more than 175 euros got got killed in front of the whole world, and nothing changed. So uh, and I got refused by Israel to leave twice. Um, it wasn't easy. And I thought maybe when I will go out, I will make more changes. I will do something more on the ground to be between the people. And here I am. It's been a year. I'm trying to do something to stop this, or at least to protect the civilians. And Mataz, as we talked about this weekend, that moment that was so moving of you taking off your press flak jacket with your colleagues around you, um, taking off the jacket with you as a kind of communal effort when you left with your parents and siblings, ultimately, Gaza? Uh, I wish I took the jacket with me. 
uh, it wasn't allowed they can because it's like the end of borders you believe that it's a kind of armor so you you can't take it um, but it was it was a thing that I from day one with me it wasn't go, going to protect me if some if the Israel decide to target me with like uh, drones uh, you had gotten calls like on your phone Motaz um, uh, yeah. on explain that yeah, it was it was a call of, uh, calls from no color ID, but it's now for Gazans no color ID that mean the IDF, so or the IOF. So um, yeah, they were like asking me to to not go there, order me like to not go there, to not okay show uh, show something else, uh, don't go to this area, and you will be killed if you went there. Stick to the sea. Um, you're not doing uh, the right work, you should uh, do something else. And I, I believe the, the millions of the people who followed me, this made some uh, protection for, uh, for Motaz, that the whole world is watching him. And if something happened, it's in front of the millions of the people. So I, I felt that maybe the millions that made them speak to me in a way that's not just, okay, we will kill you or we'll do something for you. And Motaz, finally, um, you went earlier this year in April to the pro-Palestinian student encampment at Columbia University. Your response to the protests and what you'd like to see happen here? I would like just I would like to to see everyone standing for us, standing for the humanity, standing for the right of Palestinians and their land. I want to see. The white people, the black people, the everyone here in the U.S. is standing for the right, um, on the right side of the history. I want to see everyone just standing for humanity. Stop watching us being killed. Stop paying your taxes and sending it for Israel as uh, weapons to kill the Palestinians who even don't have an army. So, um, and set, like, just support us to get our right in our land, to get our uh, free Palestine. It's not hard. It can be done, but we need a real stand with Palestinians, people. Motaz Azeza, we want to thank you so much for being with us, acclaimed Palestinian photographer who documented the first 108 days of Israel's assault on Gaza. Thank you so much for joining us from Washington, D.C. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org give.